Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Shriya Mehta, a master's student from University of Strathclyde, and I'm here to present my research on accidental defrosting. And to discuss the issue in question that, should we refreeze the swabs that have been accidentally defrosted? Now, in a forensic investigation, there's a standard procedure um, following the recovery of swabs which involves finding a potential stain at the scene, recovering that evidence using swab, labeling and documenting it, following all the rules, and then packaging and storing it frozen. And when we talk about the storage of swabs, according to standard protocols, all the swabs should be stored at 4 degrees or minus 20 degrees Celsius, and then they are being transported to the laboratory. Now, during this transportation, there lies a possibility of accidental defrosting. Accidental defrosting is nothing but just the heat around the, uh, the, the swab, which can, as shown in the figure, lead to unwinding of strands or denaturation. More heat can degrade the DNA, and therefore, biochemically, it is proven um, that if we cool the DNA, uh, it can lead to renaturation, and therefore, we. So this is this is just a biochemical process of how heat uh, and cooling effects of DNA can lead to denaturation, renaturation. But the transportation in the transportation process, accidental defrosting can arise. Now this can happen due to weather conditions, which is very common in India because of, especially during summers, because India is a tropical country or due to electrical fluctuation, or simply just mistakes made by analysts. The current storage method used for accidentally defrosted swabs till date is to refreeze them. So if a laboratory receives any swab which is accidentally defrosted, the scientists la uh, just put them back in the freezer to refreeze them because it's been shown that the DNA will need renature. But there is no scientific evidence whether refreezing is the, is the right option. So the aim of my study is to investigate differences between the two storage methods of accidentally defrosted swabs. The first method is refreezing at minus 20 degrees Celsius. And the second is storing them under ambient conditions or at room temperature, which at the time of my study was ranging from 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. And these are the other two aims that I have seek to hope achieve. Now, how have I uh, how have I prepared my samples? So uh, I have used two types of sample sources, blood and saliva, and samples were pipetted on a tile, which were recovered using double swab technique. All the swabs were stro stored frozen at minus 20 degrees Celsius for one day. And then the following day, all the swabs were taken out of the freezer and stored outside at ambient conditions uh, the next day which means that I have intentionally put them out of the freezer to simulate accidental defrosting for a day. After that day, all the accidentally defrosted swabs were divided into two batches um, and those swabs were treated differently or stored differently. Half of the swabs were stored at room temperature, which means those accidentally defrosted swabs were continued to be under ambient temperatures and the other half was put back in the freezer which means that those accidentally defrosted swabs were sent for refrozing uh, for for refreezing storage treatment so half of them were in the freezer and half of them were defrosted and this storage period happened for 7 days now after the one week of uh, storage i have extracted and quantified those uh, all those swabs from blood and from saliva using Quantiplex Pro RCQ kit, and I have obtained DNA concentration and degradation index values. The hypothesis now to compare the DNA quantities, what I have done is I have compared the DNA concentration of defrosted versus the refreeze swabs, just to check is whether the storage method has any effect on the DNA concentration. So the null hypothesis was 
So there is no significant difference between the DNA concentration of defrosted and refrozen DNA swabs, and the alternate is just the opposite. The results were found that there is no statistically significant difference uh, between the DNA concentration with p-values mentioned. Now here, I it, it is to be noted that I've used two-tailed t-testing, and which tells me at 95% confidence that there is no difference between the DNA concentration whatsoever, whether you put this, those swabs in the freezer or outside at ambient temperature for seven days or one week. The second hypothesis that was tested was to compare the degradation level of defrosted swabs versus the refreeze swabs. So the null hypothesis was there is no significant difference between degradation levels of defrosted and refrozen DNA swabs. And the results were different for saliva and blood samples. For saliva, there was no statistically significant difference between the means of degradation level of defrosted saliva or refree saliva. But for the blood samples, there was a statistically significant difference between degradation level of defrosted and the refrozen samples. Now, bear in mind that this is two-tailed test, so we cannot say what is that difference, but there is a statistically significant difference in the blood. Uh, this is just the uh, box plot which shows all the dispersion data. So the, the first plot here is telling us about the DNA concentration of defrosted and refree swabs. And this is the degradation level. Similarly, for blood sample, this is the DNA concentration and the degradation level. So if you look closely at all the four plots, we observe. So just, just to say the red boxes tells you that the swabs are defrosted and the blue boxes tells you that the swabs are refreezed. So all the, all the four plots show a pattern that all the red boxes are lesser in width then their counterpart blue boxes, which means that the when we defrost a swab, the preciseness of data and like the data is less dispersed, more precise, and there is less variability. So if you see, this doesn't have much difference, although the width of red is less than the width of the blue. Uh, in the second, third, and fourth plots, all the defrosted sample points are constricted to one range, uh, whereas the refree samples, they are quite, they show a massive variability. Um, it is to be noted that during sample preparation, all the samples, whether defrosted or refreezed, were pipetted the exact same amount. Uh, so the refree samples here and the defrosted sample, all of them were the same volume but there is still preciseness only found in the defrosted swabs and not in refrozen swabs. Now, from the study, there are two viewpoints that we can conclude. Based on the t-test, forensic scientists do not have to think about which storage method to use, considering that they store those accidentally defrosted swabs only for a week before they're being processed because t-testing shows us that there is no significant difference whatsoever between the defrosted and the refrozen swabs. However, when it comes to box plot data, the preferred storage method as shown in the box plot before uh, is suggesting to be towards the defrosted side because the defrosting data shows less variability and less possible outcomes. So, which means that if we defrost a swab, there is not a chance or there is less probability that the data would be so variable. And therefore, uh, if there is uh, less, if there is more preciseness, there is more reliability of that DNA level. But further work can be done to establish whether defrosting leads to better results or not. And uh, research needs to be done whether to, need to know whether there should be a change in those standard storage protocols where all the forensic labs just refreeze the accidentally defrosted swabs. But this study suggests that defrosting is might be a better option. Um, 
The last slide just tells you how my work is useful. This study is a first attempt to investigate storage of accidentally defrosted swabs as there is very limited guidance on proper storage of evidence and regarding temperature fluctuations in DNA swabs. Um, given the flexibility, forensic scientists can now consider cost and benefits first before uh, storing the swabs. So if let's say there's accidentally defrosted swab at the lab, and based on my t-testing, it shows that there is no statistically significant difference. The forensic scientist can look for the space in the freezer, and if there is no space, they can just put them outside, provided that they just store them for a week until they extract and then quantify the swab. Um, this study provides evidence why refreezing, uh, which is the standard procedure for all the labs, might not be the only right option to store accidentally defrosted swabs and therefore research is required to further look into it and that's the bibliography and yeah that's it thank you so much